Hello everybody, this is Ron with Robo Alarms and I'm in the shop. No surprise, I'm here with an alarm system. It's a Lynx Touch. And what I've done is I have an alarm on my alarm. I actually have another alarm system, alarm panel, that's also part of the power supply that I have mounted in my house somewhere that you'll never find. And all it takes is a simple wire from my main power supply, secondary alarm, to the uh, Link's Touch. Now, first of all, let's just show you how I've done it. The wire, if it gets cut or if you open the box, sets off an alarm. I have a tamper switch that I've mounted in here. And all I've done is run a four conductor wire to my alarm panel, which is what I normally need anyway. Uh, if I want to use exterior sirens, so uh, simple wire run. Just all I've done is add a uh, tamper switch. That's pretty easy to add. And at any point, if you need to know, I'll, I can show you. So I'm going to put power on this and show you how it works. In this case, I have a box that's mounted, the wires come out the back. It's mounted in an out of the way spot and it even has its own backup battery system. So the electricity goes off. This system still continues to send power to the Lynx Touch. But in this I've also got a board that the power supply that I've designed and built. I've also added the voice module in this. So that now then that I've powered this up if somebody runs in, and this is one of the vulnerabilities of self-contained alarms. Fortunately, the Link Touch is pretty tough, and one of these days I'm going to make a video just taking a hammer and beating it in to show you what happens to a Link's Touch if you beat it in with a hammer. And believe it or not, they're pretty tough because I've already tried it. Uh, but in this case, my alarm on the alarm. Burglar runs in, takes a screwdriver, pops it open. You've entered a video secured area. The police were called. Leave immediately. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> That's what happens, and that is pretty loud. I'm going to go ahead and close it. Disarm it. And now then, with the tamper. Disarmed. Ready to arm. Chime. And everything in there, the alarm works. Just like normal. But again, if this is mounted on my wall, burglar runs in, takes a screwdriver, pops it open, which I do recommend, and I normally do put a screw in here that holds it shut. That means they gotta take a little longer to fight it to get it open. And I also believe in mounting these with either uh, molly bolts or something very stout, not just plastic anchors, or mount into the uh, stud behind the wall. Make sure this doesn't yank off the wall easy, but even if for some reason they do and they cut the wires, it's just gonna continue to sound until I come in and go to the, uh, the hidden box to disable it. Now what is in the hidden box? I'm gonna just pull it over here and show you. Now just for the sake of demonstrations, I'm gonna and you should always have in a box or something that's at least fairly thoroughly screwed shut so that even if someone finds it, it's not still not easy. Make it as difficult on a burglar that gets into your house as possible. Your things depend on that. So here I'm taking out screws and then I actually had them loose so that I could get to it quicker. Uh, inside here, I have one of my voice driver. I have a power supply that also recharges the battery and it's got the tamper circuit and the siren output. So by using this I no longer use the white uh, 9 volt power supply that comes with a Lynx Touch. This does it all. This gives me the 9 volts that powers the uh, main alarm. It also gives me 13 volts to drive the uh, voice siren or I could use any other kind of siren. It's got a strong enough output to drive, you know, any other siren that you've got. In this particular case, I put this particular unit together to use the voice driver. And so when someone tampers with a box or sets off the alarm, you get a voice warning. And 
the alarm will continue the sound until if, if you have that happen you have to come in disable this completely by taking the uh, one side of the battery or disconnecting the battery and going to the main power source and unplugging the power until you fix your unit of course you'd have to do that anyway if somebody's attacked it and damaged it uh, if you know that you're going to be working on it you might come disconnect the siren speaker from the siren driver uh, something like that would be good but again nice easy little package this can go in the attic it can go in a closet it can go under a shelf in a counter you know actually I've hidden them like in you know, cabinets underneath the kitchen sink you know where it could be gotten to anything that works for you that is very difficult for the burglar to find but it's also convenient for you to pull the wire to Adding the alarm on the alarm means that they can't just run in. And I've watched some of these YouTube videos of some of the other people, plus in all the years I've been in it, I have seen a few alarm panels attacked. Most of the time, when it's making enough noise, a burglar leaves. If it's not too noisy, even if it's monitored, burglars will tend to stick around a little longer. If it's noisy enough, they normally leave. And here you've got a situation where even if they attack the main panel, it's going to continue the sound. And again, if you've done like me, you've got more than one siren. So, uh, burglar's just going to say, okay, that's it. I've attacked the panel. It's still going. Time to leave. That's what you want. That's the goal. To both keep your family safe and so that the burglars don't get your stuff. Be glad to hear any comments you have on this. Or if you are interested in one, leave me a comment and I'll uh, let you know how I can get you one. Uh, I print these circuit boards and I do have a number of them. Just let me know what you think. And thanks for watching. This is Ron in the shop.